Hello, everybody, and welcome to this live stream. I am super, super excited for it. It feels like ages since I last did one, and it is actually ages since I last did one. And what a pleasure to be chatting to you all in chat whilst uh, we waited for that countdown. And that countdown is so important as people get notifications late and stuff, so we have to do it. But what an absolute pleasure to be here this afternoon with all of you so uh big virtual hugs virtual hugs to all of you to see you here again it has been so long okay so we have gathered here today to talk about the launch of the new book which is here i swear i prepared it earlier this is the new book. This is what we're going to be trying to raise funds to bring out. Well, not this particular book. This is a proofreading mock-up that we had uh, done. You know, we like to test the printers that we're going to be using. So we found some printers who, who um, seem to be pretty damned awesome. Uh, they printed up this version of the book with its little uh, tag in it, which I particularly like. And this is just the Word document that um, I have finished writing with some of the images that I have been uh, started to collect and put together. Um, and this is basically just to check what their quality of printing is like, uh, what their binding is like, all the kind of usual stuff that you want to go through. So um, I have to say, I think it looks I think it looks pretty damn cool, actually. Uh, the contents, this is only 208 pages. So when it's finished, it will be about 250 pages. So um, it's an interesting it's an interesting thing. It's the biggest thing I have ever written. Um, so I'm super, super excited about it. I see someone in chat saying, I don't like the yellow. Is it too bright? Is it too happy? We get to decide on this. And it's an interesting thing, actually, when you're making a book. To have this as any color other than white or black actually adds to the cost. It makes it more expensive because, well, now apparently you're using a different color. I do like that it's quite a stiff card. Um, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's quite a stiff card that they put in as the as the cover page. Now, this layout, by the way, this is this is not the correct layout at all. We're going to have some look, some look. We're going to look into the actual layout later on. Um, this is literally just the Word document. So what do I mean by Word document? Well, for the past month and a half, I should say, let's do, yeah, stay, good book. Okay, let's do that. Uh, for the past month and a half or so, I have had the alpha version of the book, the, the, the proofreading version, I should say, has been in the hands of about 12 or 15 people, I think, uh, who have been reading through the book and giving me just a huge amount of feedback um, in terms of what they like, in terms of mainly its spelling. Main, main, mainly it's spelling that they they're giving me feedback on which i know i have an issue with so i'm very i'm very very happy with that um so yes that's that's uh what's been going on for the last month because the book is finished very seldom do we release a kickstarter where we haven't actually finished the bulk of the the work that i can do anyway um the next step of course now is to do all of the illustrations and then to do the beautiful layout that we we all love and 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 uh hope to be there um yeah so so that's that's the next kind of phase um right so now if you have questions about the book because i saw there were a few questions earlier on but i've already forgotten them please type the word question in caps and then jot that into and drop that into the um chat so then i can i can look at your questions and then ask and answer them for you so let us have a look let's have a look at what you're going to see in terms of that kickstarter's opening cover um so that is the official picture that will be on the kickstarter you can see the cover of the book there practical guide to becoming a great gm and there you can see some sample layout pages now i will go in closer onto those sample pages a little bit later on as we talk more about the book but that is what we are going to be seeing if you go to kickstarter that is the first image that you would now see uh if you haven't yet already followed on that page okay so that is something to bear in mind now i see there's some questions already 
um landon's question is question my question yes exactly like this question uh put it in caps that's absolutely perfect and for those of you who might be confused i'm twit i'm twitching both i am broadcasting both to twitch and to youtube at the same time so we can reach out to everybody who likes to be on different platforms and things um so uh Sointex 2 says or asks question when is it going to be available that's always the million dollar question isn't it that's a valid question to ask we currently are putting down the delivery of the finished book to September next year. And you go, but you finished writing it. Why, why is it going to take so long? Well, we've just finished a uh, delivery of our last Kickstarter, which was the Epic Battle Maps. And something that we learned, this was the first time that we were doing fulfillment of the book. And we did it that way because it allows us to kind of really cut down the costs. So unless you're in far flung areas, I don't know if Canada has yet got their Epic Battle Maps book, but uh, I know it's going out in the States at the moment, just to get the book from the UK to the US. The books left the UK towards the end of June because they had to be in Europe before the 1st of July because there was all sorts of tax implications and stuff. So they left the UK. They were in the UK warehouse and they left on the 1st of June. They only got to the US and cleared all of the processes and things. I think it was about two weeks ago, if that, maybe a week ago. So that's something that we just have no control over. So we expect that the PDF will be available a lot sooner than that. Probably the PDF will come out, I would imagine, somewhere in the March to May time period. That depends on if we can get all of the artwork collected in. Because one of our goals with this book is that we want almost every page, almost every page, to not only give you education on a new way of GMing and running your games and preparing for your games and organizing your games, not only that information, but to also inspire you and to give you imagery to look at that go, yeah, I think that's quite, I think that sparked something. I want to do an adventure that has that. So if you look at, at, at our previous books, um, Epic Battle Maps aside, Generally speaking, we've had between 45 and 55 images in those books, which have been between 80 and about 150 pages. So this is already 208 pages, basically, of pure text. So we're expecting it to expand to 250, but on every page is going to be a piece of artwork as well. So we're looking at making well over 100 pieces of art at the very minimum, because at least art can stretch over two pages. So if you make a big picture, it fits on, on, on both. Um, so that's our that's our delivery is September next year is when the physical book will be in your hands. OK, just to give you a whole idea. I mean, for me, the most frustrating thing is to have all of these things sort of hidden in, in shadow and stuff. It's like, no, well, this is our learning. And, and, and this whole thing is about you trusting us to deliver this product. So we're telling you all of the, the, the ins and outs. OK. Um, all right. So that is uh, that question. Then uh, John John Rice says, uh, question, comparing to the complete guide, what can we expect? OK, if you're talking about the complete guide to epic campaigns, this was something that I and Derek, my business partner, we were absolutely adamant on. The books contain different information. <clears throat> <laughs> I beg your pardon, something caught in my throat. Um, so Epic, the complete guide to Epic campaigns is a book on creating Epic campaigns. And, and there is nothing that is in that book that I wouldn't still stand by today. However, Practical Guide has... Uh, all of, not all, it has different information on looking at epic campaigns, but it also looks at the other types of campaigns. The player campaign, the incidental campaign, the accidental campaign, the open sandbox campaign. Um, it looks at all of the different aspects of campaigns. Now, epic campaigns, the complete guide to epic campaigns, focus quite heavily on creating villains and henchmen and on bringing your epic campaign to a climatic conclusion and that sort of thing. It was really, it really is focused around the central idea of creating that epic campaign. In 
practical guide, we don't look at how to finish your campaigns. What we're looking at is how your campaigns will finish themselves based on how you've set them up. So it's a really, it's a very different mindset. Now, there is one section that I did not include in practical guide that proofreaders haven't seen it either. And I was giving a talk on Monday last week, I think it was, to a wonderful company. It was a private a company function that invited me to come and give them a talk via, via Zoom. And I realized that it's in practical, it's in the complete guide to creating epic campaigns. It's not in practical guide. And I feel like it needs to be in practical guide as well, which is the NPC. There's a very small little paragraph on, on how to make your NPCs likable. And so I, I'm going to bring that in here. But if you have epic campaigns, this book will be new information. 98% of it is new stuff. And there's another big reason for that. When I wrote the complete guide to Epic Campaigns, I wrote that three and a half years ago now, or three years ago, based on what I had been doing on the channel. This is everything since that, based on what I've been doing on the channel. And, and looking at things from a very different kind of perspective, a very different way of, of how do we GM and... If you've been watching my YouTube channel, you may have been noticing an evolution in terms of how I'm trying to, to get people to think about GMing. And that's what this book is all about. This book is about looking at our GMing approach as three very distinct spheres. Now, if you watched my YouTube video yesterday, you would have seen me talk about this topic already. But it's three very distinct spheres. And this one, the first sphere is you, yourself, as the GM. You need to understand what kind of GM you are, how and and what do you like, what don't you like, what are you strong at, what are you weak at, where where is your mindset, where are your players' mindset. So it's about understanding yourself as a creator, as a GM first. Then it's about understanding the world that you're playing in. So whether it's a pre-made world or a world that you have created or you're adapting a world, there's a whole section in the book that looks just at how to do that and how to do it in such a way that you are not creating a mental memory trap for yourself where you have to remember all the stuff that you wrote down and you've got pages and pages of notes. Absolutely, this whole book is about, no, we are trying to move away from entrapping ourselves to have to remember or to have to create all the stuff before we're playing to rather thinking about all of our, our, our GMing requirements from a distanced kind of view and setting up our game before it starts in such a way that our game is going to tell us what's happening our NPCs are going to tell us what they want to do. Our campaign worlds are going to fill themselves up with information that we are really just now along to catalog uh, during the game and to explore and understand. So it's about a mind shift away from preparing everything to setting up a framework that then allows everything to create itself as you're playing. And that so it shifts the burden of you being a GM who has to know everything up front to you being a GM who is freed up to then decide how to describe a scene rather than focusing on whether the history in the scene is correct or whether this is correct or whether that, 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 that is correct. So that's the primary difference between the two. And we will still be selling both books separately. And I believe on the Kickstarter, you can actually get the PDF of Epic Campaigns as an additional add-on simply because we believe that both books have very different things to offer. Um, right. Uh, that also, I kind of think, completes uh, Swibule or Swibul's question, what is covered in the book. I'll go in a little bit more detail on what's in the book as well. Um, Raider asks, would this book be sent to stores or would it be sold online exclusively? So Raider, we have got a retailer option this time around. It's the first time we were launching a Kickstarter with a retail option um, for retailers who want to buy five or six or ten copies of the book to then put on their shelves. We are really exploring how to get our books onto shelves, but that is an incredibly complicated journey. Unless any of you happen to be agents for buyers for bookstores and 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 that sort of thing, it's a really complicated process to get your books into stores. Um, 
at least certainly from what we have investigated and looked into. So uh, we will be having the book available for um, resale on our website, and that will be a physical copy as well as a PDF copy. Um, and we will continue to stick to our policy that if you buy the physical copy, you get the PDF copy free of charge. Um, because really, making the PDF takes an hour and a half after you've made the, the actual book. So there, there's no justification for charging more for it. Um, okay. Uh, da -da -da -da. Next question. Uh, Eric asks, are there random tables that help with adventuring? There are so many random tables. Um, not so much if I think about it, you're not going to open the book and find a random table for monsters that you'll encounter in a desert or a random table for this or a random table for that. It's more along the lines of here are random tables to help encourage and inspire you to make your game world feel alive. So I haven't done a full count of how many tables are in the actual book itself, but there are a lot of tables. There are absolutely a lot of tables. And all I will say is that the stretch goals for this campaign will and do include not only random tables for generating of ideas and, and that sort of thing, but also NPCs and random NPCs based on the OGAS system, which is the system that I created um, for all NPCs. Again, I did a video on it a couple of weeks ago. So that if we unlock those stretch goals, then we will start to get more and more of that as well. You know, at some point we get to a point, and, and this is with any book, where you go, okay, the book is um, 300 pages long. From a printing perspective, a book that is 200 pages versus a book that is 300 pages, the print difference might be add an extra $2 to the actual cost of the book. Um, no, I'm lying. Add an extra 50 cents to the copy on of the to the cost of the book, right? So it's not a significant cost. The page count is not really a big a big factor in in printing your book. The big factor comes in in the weight of the actual book. So this book currently weighs just over 1.1 kilos, which is about what two and a half pounds or so. If it starts to get thicker, that postage just starts to go up and up, and the postage doesn't. Sometimes it goes up by a dollar or two dollars or three dollars sometimes it just jumps by ten dollars and you're like what yes it's in a new male category it's now no longer male it's a parcel or it's a this it's a that um and that's another major factor and, and the u.s is as far as i'm concerned the best country for shipping books in because the u.s has a special ma media mail section for shipping books in which is absolutely phenomenal the the, the shipping costs are, are really low as opposed to other countries where just to ship the book to the country costs a, a fairly large amount of money and then the country slaps on a hundred percent charge because they don't want books in their country or they want to try and promote their own local publishers who don't have the expertise to actually print locally um you know so it's 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 so variable anyway all right i, I digress um josh colby asks when will the kickstarter be going live it will be going live now in about i would say 11 minutes it's going to go live on the half hour wherever you are in the world um so there you go um Nachshub uh, asks Nachshub 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 asks will there be stuff in it like building puzzles or traps um there is as far as I recall and then if any of the alpha readers are in the chat and have read that book recently as far as I recall I don't specifically talk about um, puzzles or traps um, simply because that is it's quite a complicated subject and it's in, 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 in one way um, in another way something that I do often refer to um, because one of the big breakdowns in the book is the plot structure for all the different types of adventures you can have and so one of those is murder mystery which is very similar to a puzzle in a, in a, in a way, in a, in, a, in a kind of weird way. So that is definitely in there, but I don't recall very much writing specifically on puzzles. 
I know it sounds awful, but I mean, I finished writing this book maybe two months ago and I've been doing a whole bunch of other stuff since then. So, so forgive me if I don't remember specifically on puzzles and traps, but I don't, I don't think, I don't think that anything was there. Uh, Landon asked, were you tempted to call it the complete guide to, I'm not going to lie. There was at one point, the complete guide to being a great GM was on the table, but one of the things that we've always had high praise for from not only from the complete guide to epic campaigns, but also from Bounty Hunter was people kept saying how they liked the fact that there was practical advice that we had put in as GM advice into all of our books. So with this one, we have double down on that. And we said, well, then this is the practical guide. And there's a couple of reasons for it. I'm going to um, show you now um he said i think i'm gonna go here first and i just want to show you guys something so this is the back end of kickstarter we have a thousand five hundred and seventy two people following um i'll share this link here although it's going to go live in a few moments I, we've never had a thousand five hundred and seventy two people following but that's not what i really wanted to show you what i wanted to show you was this he said and hopefully he reveals the right page so what we have done is this is the inside of the book. The book is, is, is divided into three phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three. So this is a piece of artwork um, that I've done for the book. And you can see the layout. Let me get myself out of the way here so I'm not sort of bothering it too much. You can see what we've done is we've broken it up into color-coded chapters so that it is really practical, really easy for you to go through and find what it is that you were looking for, what you were trying to reference, um, and uh, to to try and get in and, and, and do that sort of thing. And again, the idea was we want this to be beautiful. We want this book to inspire you. So here's a little halfling gnome uh, or, well, a halfling or a gnome or maybe a half gnome. So a, ho a homing, uh, a home, I'm not sure. Um, so he's a, he's a, 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 a dis he's got a distillery on his cart, which is pulled by his favorite pig and he's being chased by, I don't think it's a human. I think it's a giant. I think it's way too big. Uh, and then there's a centaur hidden here in the background. But this is what I was talking about in terms of that artwork, trying to make it pop as much as possible. Um, if we dive underneath, here is a page. Now, I can't really hide myself, so I'm going to just move myself around for a little bit so that you get a sense of what's going on here. But this is what the inside book looks like. And so what we have done is we have taken every idea and we have said, right, it's maybe one paragraph, maybe it's three paragraphs, but it's a, it's a core idea. And we've put a core idea into a box so that each of the pages has some imagery somewhere on it, but it has these boxes. So you're looking for boxes. You're not looking for, for um, sort of a paragraph in amongst pages and pages and pages of text. So that's 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 the first thing. The second thing that we did was we said, OK, well, we need to make sure that just because you've read the paragraph doesn't mean that um, we 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 walk away and just re retain that. We need to be able to put it into practice, but we also need to see what that looks like. So it's all good and well for me to say, oh, well, just create a random encounter using these these ideas and then just to leave it at that so what we've done is we've built these things called encounters and i'm really excited about encounters so i'm going to just try and hide myself uh down here okay so these are the encounter boxes and this is still uh when i say this is not finalized artwork this is layout that we have started to work on to see how it would work and also for the kickstarter to create some imagery and stuff um just to 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 give you guys something to look at. So what it is, is every encounter that we have put into the book, and there are, I don't want to lie and say hundreds, but put it this way. Here, this typical example of an encounter. Explore three different TTRPGs that use three different mechanic systems. Compare how each plays out and look for systems that fit your GM style. So this is uh, in the first phase of the book. This is still going back a little bit. Um, and yes, it sounds very much like homework, 
from from school or from high school right or, or university um and um then you're going to have a look at it and you earn 25 xp per system that you explore so you could potentially earn 75 experience points right uh just answering this so there are my answers in blue so i went and i looked at dungeons and dragons fifth edition i'm allowed to cheat because i'm the author of this book right i looked at uh, dungeons and dragons i looked at through the breach and then i looked at bounty hunter well because otherwise i would get shot is that a typo in through the breach most likely it's a typo in through the breach um, um because this is the text that i gave to martin martin does the layout for all of our books he does a beautiful job i think so martin would have taken whatever i had created and given to him so this was done before the proofreaders have got hold of it please bear that in mind um and of course the best way to find spelling mistakes is just to to, to check everything 10 times and then make it public and the moment it's public people will find mistakes so that's good though that's good i mean that's that's positive feedback um so my answers are there and you can see there's the, the 75 xp and then i i sort of explain and 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 um unpack my answers right so the encounters to give you an idea of how many encounters there are in the book on average most encounters will earn you somewhere between 25 and 100 experience points the entire book has over 19,000 experience points worth of assignments of encounters not that you need to do these these are just to make sure that you remember what's going on and to 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 get you a sense that aha you do understand um and you do you do recognize this and you do you do um that as well so i think i think this for us is really the practical practical part of of the entire of the entire project so uh, we're really happy so you can see some pages have got um full imagery and full color some pages it's more in the sepia kind of color um and some pages um one or two pages just have a, a standard sort of canvasy background especially if it's lots of of text which is setting you up for an idea so as with all of my books i always try and explain my reasoning get you to to see the concept and then get you to put it into into practice all right um, and with that, I realize we've only got three minutes before this is going to go live. So we need to get there. I need to, I need to shake my tail here. Um, and then I'm just looking at questions. Did you include advice on setting and playing games at different technology levels beside the common medieval fantasy level? So this is what is super important for me to, to answer here. This book, although it looks fantastical it's got fantasy art in it it is designed to work across all role-playing games it doesn't matter whether the role-playing game uses dice or cards it doesn't matter whether it's sci-fi or medieval or world war ii the principles that are within this book are generic it talks about for example bringing your world to life and one of the easiest ways to bring your worlds to life is to have events happen that have nothing to do with the players whatsoever, but which will affect, affect the player characters. So that could be a new tax. And I think in the book, the example is, well, a new tax is, is implemented on wearing of capes or on wearing of a certain color. That is applicable whether it's at a spaceport, the starship captain arrives and they walk on board and they get taxed on the number of eyeballs they have in their heads. It doesn't matter. The concept is exactly the same. You're, imp you're imposing something that had nothing to do with the players and now makes the world feel like, oh, it's a living world, etc., etc. Et okay, so, so bear that in mind. All right, so we are a minute away. I don't know what's wrong. I trim my mustache and it causes nose itching if, if you wonder what the hell's going on. Um, and, um, so yes, uh, link the vampire asks, will you be doing an audio version of the book at some point? Love your voice guys. So I don't want to say anything, but in the past we've done audio books of our, of our books, um, simply because it's been a, a, a Patreon reward. Um, 
Now, however, and I'm just going to go onto this page here as we prepare for launch. Uh, I'm going to press this button. Uh, we are hoping to do a, a an audio version. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And so here we go. We have to read all of the rules. Have you done and completed everything? Yes, I believe so. And so now, folks. Drum roll. Launch now. And it's live. There we go. It is live, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I will share the link up for it uh, as soon as I remember where to grab this link on. There is a video there. Um, will the Kickstarter rewards be limited in number? Asks Spiralad. No. So if you look at the page, I'm super, super happy with what we did with this page. This is the only, this is the only reward limit. Um, is the first 500 backers of the physical book will get their name into the book. And we learned our lesson with Bounty Hunter where we were just putting everybody's name into the book and we discovered that it was going to be longer than half of the book, as a matter of fact. So that was something that we were very, very aware of. And so we said, okay, the first 500 people to physically back the book uh, will get their names in the book. Um, this was just a beautiful mock-up video that we found. We were able to sort of put our pages in. There won't be these gaps around the edges, by the way. Um, but yeah, so there it is. Hopefully it contains everything that you need to know on how and what is in the book um, and what it's going to look like. And there's a breakdown of how those chapters are working and that sort of thing. And it's a very simple Kickstarter. There is there are three pledges. You can pledge because you love the project. Um, you can pledge for a digital copy or you pledge for a physical copy. Um, and that comes with a digital copy, obviously. And then if you're a retailer, you can pledge for four copies. Um, so where are we shipping to is a great question. And we have a very comprehensive, I think anyway, um, list down here of where we ship to. We ship to anywhere in the world. The biggest problem is look at these price differences here. There is nothing that we can do about these. These are the numbers as low as we can go. We've got two distributors, one based in the UK, which does UK and Europe and uh, Australia. And then we have one who is in uh, the USA, who does USA and Canada. And these are just the prices. Now, the rest of the world, that 45 pounds is really, really, really high. But that's not true. It's not true. Each of the different countries on this planet have different costs. Some require us to ship with um, extra insurance. Some countries we won't ship to normally. We will only use a courier like FedEx or, or DHL. Other countries, definitely we can. And of course, Europe is another major challenge as, a, as, a, as an entity because there are different taxes in different places and things. Um, so we have tried to give you, these are estimated shipping costs. And one of our pledges, we've done this before, is we make sure that whatever you guys are paying, we try and absorb as much of the shipping costs if they escalate higher than possible. But there are times, and I mean, I'm saying what's already on the Kickstarter, but there are times where it's like, well, the country just slapped on an extra 20% COVID handling fee or a 10% this fee or a 10% that fee. Um, so, we, well, we, we, we try. All right. So there you can see the flow, the timeline, September, we start, October, we finish, and then we just work our way through that um, until eventually we get to 2022 and delivery of the book. Um, and yes, then, of course, all our social media. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. We are there. And oh, my God, you guys. <laughs> Well, okay, 30% towards our goal. So I think we can say we're probably going to get there, uh, which is which is uh, super cool. Uh, Donovan McDonald, so great to see you there in chat. Um, it's, it's nuts. It's absolutely, absolutely insane. So um, you can be patient and just wait for me to come and visit South Africa one day oh, if, if COVID ever ends. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So um, 
is uh, uh, I think Lauren has shared the link there. Um, I hope that's the short link for it. I will share it on Twitch now as well. If Lauren, uh, if Lauren can do that, that'd be great. Uh, thanks to Lauren, by the way, for uh, being our uh, moderator in, in the chat. So there we are. Big thank you to all of you who have already backed. I mean, it is, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's really, really cool. And all I can say is that it has been such a privilege to release books and to get people coming back and saying the book has helped because that's what we're trying to do. And to have your your trust that this book will help, I think I it's just just mind blowing. Um, so so really, thank you all very much. Um, and yes, uh, let's see anything else. Uh, any other questions that I can answer very, very quickly? Um, does the book have any notes on creating or researching cultures? Something I've noticed that is far too many people base their cultures on stereotypes of one aspect of a real culture. This is from Dracone. So one of the things that we do look at is the idea that when you are creating your own world, you have to ask the question, why do you like what you're adding to your world? What aspect are you taking and exploring? And you are absolutely right in terms of stereotypes. It is a moment that um, it is a stereotype if you only use one aspect. And you don't want to only use one aspect of a culture. You want to explore that culture. So for me, it's definitely in the book. The, uh, the book definitely focuses on if you are going to add something to your world space, uh, which is basically adding to your own psyche, your own mind, that's adding to your research. And then you have to do it. You have to go and research it. So if you want to base your your uh, gnomes on, let's say, the Swahili uh, peak, uh, speaking people um, of Kenya, um, uh, go and research all of the aspects of those people. An amazing people, the Maasai, the Maasai Mara, the Maasai warriors, tremendously uh, full of courage and passion with some really weird things going on uh as well you know so so um always explore and, and, and always add um right so any other questions i'm not sure i saw any others um this wasn't meant to go much longer than now anyway i'm just gonna make sure i haven't missed any questions uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh, so yes we do ship to australia was a question um uh henning ewitt asks will there be hints and comments for using music and sound sound files during games uh thank you sir for inspiring me to be a better gm my absolute absolute pleasure for inspiring you really 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 um and um so in terms of using music and sound files i don't really talk about creating tone and mood at the gaming table i think there is something that is mentioned in epic campaigns that talks about that but it is such a, tr a difficult subject to to really look at um i like to use soundtracks movie soundtracks because they designed to emote a a feeling from us that that's their whole purpose um, but I know a lot of players find that very distracting and very irritating. So there isn't anything specific on, on sound files and stuff during the game. Um, what is very specific is that our entire goal with Practical Guide to Becoming a Great GM is to reduce the stress and the burden on you as the GM that you might feel in terms of rules, law, and, and, and memorizing, uh, memorizing all of those uh, the history and, and that kind of stuff so that you are freed up to then be able to go, oh, I'm going to build a soundboard and use my soundboard, or I'm going to use some music here or, or some music there. So, um, yeah, there we are. Uh, Amber S says, do any of the tips relate to past videos? And if so, would the book include QR links to those videos? You raise a very, very valid idea, Amber. And one of the things that we have been definitely looking at is we've been saying, okay, so we have two options. Either we link to previous videos that have covered ideas or what we do. And this is my hope with with the stretch goals. I mean, they're supposed to be secret, but you guys are here and it's only you and me. Um, 
one of the stretch goals is to actually produce a series of videos almost like masterclass videos based on the book because my previous videos are absolutely valid there is nothing wrong with them whatsoever however they are still coming from a mindset of the gm should prepare some stuff and should build a certain uh, in a certain way this book says that's valuable but let's look at building it from a different perspective so if if we're still debating and certainly one of the ideas is to have the chapter linked to a video so there you are um so that that's the thinking the thinking on that uh, okay uh white tiger 225 can i have a hug before you go absolutely a virtual hug for everybody because this has been an amazing launch um <laughs> oh my goodness folks uh six and a half well you know what you know what i have to say um i'm just this is insane this is absolutely insane folks i mean i'm gonna share it's my birthday today you may or may not have noticed or not noticed or no, why would you notice but it is my birthday today and to have our 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 funding goal so close not even an hour in this is amazing this is amazing this is amazing um so yeah absolutely mind blown absolutely absolutely mind blown um david cummings asks could you do that in a non D, &D system helps to see a pro do it uh, not sure what you mean specifically there, but um, like I said before, this book is completely system agnostic. It will work for whatever genre, whatever campaign style you are using. I use examples throughout the whole book. I talk about some sci-fi examples, some modern day, some, uh, whatever example kind of first comes to mind when I was writing it and is the most appropriate, I then drop that in there. Um, oh, I see uh, Dreaded GM is here. I see Dead Aussie Gamer is here. That's fantastic. Nice to see you guys as well. Thank you for joining uh, in. Uh, another question. Are there areas about using the players to run the game? Not co-GM, but having them construct parts based on character development and backstory. Absolutely. This is one of the most fundamental concepts behind this entire book. We always, mostly, generalizing here, I always looked at a game as I, the GM, have to come up with the with the game. I have to manage it. I have to control it. And I have to create plots for my players to engage in. This book says that's not that's not the right way to do it. You are one of the players of the game. And as a result, your responsibilities are primarily on ensuring equality, ensuring fairness, ensuring that the rules are applied appropriately, that the appropriate rules are applied. You have your functions, but that function of journey of story and of plot, your, your plot involvement is at the beginning of the adventure and then it stops. You are no longer involved once the adventure has started. The NPCs are involved, but the PCs are involved. So they're the ones who are going to be driving stuff. So in terms of Looking into their backstories and pulling out stuff, absolutely. There's a whole section that says, hey, this is how you can mine stuff and get stuff out of there. So um, definitely, definitely, definitely something there. And of course, of all, thank you all. A big happy birthday. What a great, amazing birthday it is. Um, so yes, and now I, <laughs> I cannot believe this. I'm, uh, it's insane. It's absolutely, absolutely insane um secondhand samurai yes kaora the amazing cartographer he and i share the birthday uh the same birthday so there you are libras together um right well uh, thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you um uh yeah uh this is this is nuts um right uh no more questions um i i yeah there's not much more for me to say we're at eight thousand four hundred pounds already yeah um thank you thank you thank you thank you everyone i will let you guys get back to your very early mornings for some of you i know it was a very early morning um and um so uh yeah let's uh 
let's uh, stay a few minutes, says Elias. Well, well, okay. Oh. So, yes, Dead Odyssey Gamer, a big thank you to you. I see that I've just received a, a Steam gift. We uh, love playing computer games together, but are on wrong countries, wrong time zones. Um, so there you are. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, uh, let me grab a link for you guys. Uh, that is the link. I will share the link in chat with you. Um, that's the link for the Kickstarter. But yes, now, I mean, we're at 9,141 pounds. It's, it's, we got 900 pounds to go. This is nuts. This is absolutely, absolutely insane. I mean, it's, uh, Link the Vampire asked a question. Yes, ask questions because that will definitely help. Um, that will definitely help. Anything you want to say about world building in the book? Oh my goodness. So world building is um, the whole of phase two. Uh, let me find phase two. I don't know. It wasn't. Um, world building, I don't know if you can see Oh, let me just go to the main screen here. And please, folks, remember this that I'm showing you is the rough. This is the PDF. This is the Word document layout. You can see there we talk um, a huge amount about world building, um, about designing nations and cultures, um, and and more important. So, so, so we do all of that in world building. But we then go forward and later on in phase three of the book, which is on, on preparing your adventures and stuff, and I'm not going to be able to find it because I didn't prepare it. But we then talk about, um, okay, now it's time to design your battle maps. How do you design a battle map? How do you design, um, and I think the example, if I'm not mistaken, in the book I talk about um, how would you design the deck plans of the Death Star. I mean, modern day, we can go and probably find someone who has done some deck plans of the Death Star. But for those of us that want to create our own space or who want to understand, oh my goodness, we've just done it. Stop the clock. I've, I've, it's done. It's done. I can go home now. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I know what I'm going to be doing this afternoon. I was going to be sitting quietly, hoping that that number would get to like maybe 10,000 pounds in 30 days. Now it's a case of, I got to change the banner. We're, we're in, yeah, 15 minutes, pretty much. Um, that is... That is absolutely amazing. Uh, that you guys were here for that is... I'm I'm blown away. I'm just blown away. I'm 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 speechless. Thank you. Um, so there we go. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I can't find this. Oh, here we go. So there's even sections on how to use maps of two very different things to then design a map for something that you have no idea what would be in there normally. So the Death Star. You go well. It's got some corridors and stuff, or not a Death Star. What about a, a, an Orc Citadel? How would you design these things? So there's, there's stuff in there as well. So there's just so, so, so much in there uh, for us to, to, to draw from, I hope. Again, it's about being practical. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, it's, yeah. Um, how do we fund a great GM tattoo? Um you want me to get a tattoo or you want to get a tattoo of great gym well i can give you the logo but i don't think that that would necessarily be a very good tattoo to get um so dawn barris asks any chance the people here can get their copies signed oh, i wish i wish i wish i wish so signing is a major major um shipping cost thing and it gets silly however 
next year and the year after, I plan on traveling to so many different countries. Um, we've now hopefully and thankfully gotten to the point where we seem like we're on top of um, everything from a, a health perspective. So I plan on going to a lot of conventions next year. Um, and that means that if you have a copy of the book, I will happily, happily sign it for you. Um, so yes, um, I'm hoping next year to do Gen Con at the very least. Um, we'll do Essen. We're doing Dragon Meet again because we were there last time. I will be at Dragon Meet in the London at the end of this year in December. I will be there, but of course the book won't be ready um, for that. Um, that uh, uh, Brother Skodidi says, since signing is such a headache, could you do book plates that you sign and mail to people? I hadn't ever even thought about that. Um, it certainly is something that we could definitely, definitely have a look at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll explore that and, and add that to the list. Um, right now, I, I, um, I would have to, I have to go and update some, some Kickstarter banners and stuff instead of saying, help us reach our goal. It's like, help us unlock the next stretch goal. And then I have to prepare those, those graphics. It's a great problem to have. Um, Essen in Germany. Yes, absolutely. Essen is a major board gaming role playing, um, ex extravaganza. Uh, I can't go to this year, but next year I definitely want to be there. Um, can we contribute our own art or send some for considerations? Inky Design, that is an excellent question. I'm so glad you asked it. I'm so glad there's so many people still here. So one of the things that we like to do, um, because I have so many pieces of artwork to commission, is that on the Discord channel, and I'm just going to uh, go set that up right now, uh, if you join our Discord channel, How to Be a Great GM, you'll see that there's actually a section there called Practical Guide. Um, and um, in the Practical Guide, um, I will be over the course of the next few weeks or months anyway, asking for art suggestions. Now, Inky, I know your art is absolutely amazing. Um, but what we look for is we say okay folks we need a submission or we need an idea for some artwork please give us some ideas uh for some artwork that deals with this particular topic or that topic because again we want the artwork to relate specifically to the the the, the chapter and the point that we are are, are are talking about um so there there is an answer to to that can we uh you've already asked that one um semi pessimistic says will you post your tour schedule absolutely um if you follow us on twitter um or on discord or facebook any of our social media we always say okay we're going to be there we're going to be here we're going to be doing this we're going to be doing that uh, but yes next year i think it's going to be a lot easier to plan this kind of stuff as well because a lot of conventions it's still very much up in the air um, as to as to um, whether they will actually happen or not. Okay, well that has been an extra half hour of insanity and amazing amazingnessnessness from 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 you folks. Um, I, I again I'm just blown away and I can only hope that you will definitely draw benefit from this project. Um, and from what I've got back in the feedback, you certainly will. So. That's it from me, folks. Until next time. Um, yeah, I just want to say again. Uh oh, uh, another question just popped in. As I was about to say goodbye, uh, Lucas Strangli, Strangli uh, says, "Have you considered a printer-friendly, um, no background layers functionality version of the PDF for home printing?" Uh, we haven't, but. One of the things that we are definitely, and I can say this now with a little bit of confidence, um, one of the things that we definitely will be doing is all of the exercises in the book, as well as all of the tables, anything that you would probably want to have in hand, as opposed to the book. So you don't want to write in the book necessarily. You don't want to, you don't want to use the, the, the templates and stuff. All of that is a stretch goal, which we definitely are going to, to, to get there I think if we if, 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 if isn't that the first one I, my brain has gone to mush I'm blown away by this uh, folks um, but it's definitely one of the stretch goals is to to yeah there we go it's the very first stretch goal 
which is a separate workbook that has all of that stuff in there and it will be so it's a form it's a a fillable pdf so you can download the pdf and then you can fill it in but that will be in black and white it won't be in color so you could then print it out as well because again it's about the practicality of stuff and all i can say is that we're only three thousand pounds away from that stretch goal so in the next 29 days i'm pretty certain it's gonna unlock okay all right now that's it for me i swear i'm going now you guys have been absolutely amazing i i, I love you all giant hugs thank you have an amazing day and happy gaming